Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video. This is so interesting, the weather patterns now. They're finally, like guys, it is December 22nd as of the recording of this video and the weather patterns are finally gray outside. Like where I live, this should happen at least a month ago. But anyways, we're going to talk about today the Battlefield 5 Tides of War. And whether or not I think it's good for the game and the, my first impressions of it. Now, if you don't know what Tides of War is, they're basically kind of like weekly challenges. And weekly challenges that have a route you go through. So you have all these challenges and you have to complete them in a certain order and there's different orders you can take to kind of fulfill, you know, you want to do something different. So like one of them is deal damage to planes or deal damage in an airplane or deal damage as assault to vehicles. It's very vehicle based this time as we're recording this. But I noticed a couple things with Tides of War. Now at first I thought Tides of War was really supposed to be this kind of the hardcore players with the week-long challenges, you know, unlock the things. And it really does, it's not that. It seems like, first of all, it's a way to add more unlockables in the game when you're not just grinding levels. There's still things that you grind levels for, but the main pieces that you unlock with each Tides of War challenge set are, in fact, things that you unlock from challenges. And it's really cool unlocking things from challenges rather than just playing the game and leveling up. I mean, that's kind of why, I think, like, when you first unlock a gun in Battlefield 5, the levels 0 through 4 are the most fun, because you're unlocking specializations and you're making your gun better. And I kind of like how they're adding a little bit, you know, all the, most of the new guns in the game, you know, the Rib Royals, or, sorry, me and Rad call it the Ribioli, because Ribioli, Ribioli, and all this meme stuff that we try to do. The Trench Gun are new, but the VGO and the Slaughter 1906 have been added that you gotta unlock. It was really cool. I think it helps out with the casual audience actually more than the professional and the nerd audience, I guess you could call it. The hardcore audience. Because I noticed I was playing through and unlocking the weapons. I'm like, man, this is easy. It's only taking me like two or three hours. And then I finally um, made the MG34 a gold gun. And I was like, wow. This is the stuff that the hardcore players are doing. The camos, the gold guns, even the mint stuff. That's for the hardcore players, but the Tides of War stuff, that's more for the casual players. And it, it, once I unlocked a gold gun and did a couple Tides of War weeks, I understood. I understood, and I'm like, oh, this helps balance out, you know, accessibility in a way that doesn't really harm the hardcore players. Honestly, I think this is one of the only ways I've seen where they add accessibility and they don't harm the hardcore players, because... The base game didn't have this, and they added it in, and it's not, like, hindrance, a hindrance to the hardcore players. You know, and sometimes when you play games, they're like, like, what they did with the time to kill. They're like, okay, we're gonna make it so it's harder to kill people so that you stay alive longer. And the hardcore players are like, no, don't do that. And then, you know, now they didn't do that, but they added Tides of War, and that helps for the casual audience. So I think it helps with the casual audience more. But it also gives the hardcore people just a little bit more to do. And I feel like they can use it to encourage us to play with different playstyles. My, honestly, for some reason, my preferred playstyle in this game is the support class and the assault class. But, like, the first week, I played a little bit of medic. I played it, you know, even though it was only, like, about two hours, because most of the challenges were medic, I played a little bit of medic. And I played more support and was building things, even though I love, I love building things. Like, I have lost objectives just because I wanted to build stuff. It's happened before. And Assault, you know, actually using the Assault equipment, I think, was a big one, that Assault challenge. Because I think sometimes if you're a newer player, you really don't know everything that you have at your disposal, right? Like, you can play Assault, you know that you have, you know, an automatic weapon or a semi-auto rifle and a handgun, but sometimes, I mean, you forget to use your grenades, you forget that you have rocket launchers, you forget that you have a grenade launchers, anything like that. Or as the ammo guy, you forget that you have the ammo packs. So it helps also as a training tool. It'd be really cool if they had data on, like, the ratio of, like, how many, like, on average, what percent of the time are you going to throw a grenade before you die? On average, what percent of the time are you going to use a Panzerfaust before you die? It'd be cool if they had that data and could use it to kind of shape the challenges they do. But let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. I really like Tides of War. I think it's a good addition. I think it's more towards the casual players, but I think it's going to help out 
the casual players, especially with unlocking some guns, because I mean, if you think about it, getting a level 20 on even one class is kind of hard to do. And so I think it helps out for the casual people with unlocking guns and also giving them some challenges that they can actually complete, you know, without wasting like four weekends completing. So I'm Pacific Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I'll see you in the next episode of Stream Blog or Steam It Post of whatever I decide to make.